I'm honored to be invited to speak to this conference of distinguished physicians and scientists. I'm an American biogerontologist and an attorney whose focus for 25 years has been on longevity interventions. Ten years ago, I met with Professor Kavinson at the St. Petersburg Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology, and we agreed to conduct a peptide bioregulator longevity study. Over many decades, Professor Kavinson had developed the natural extract Cytomax peptide bioregulators, and I propose using these peptides for systemic biological age reversal. Professor Kavinson was at that time primarily using the peptides for medical treatments and for organ and uh, system regeneration. We both believe that the peptides by cellular reprogramming could reverse biological aging. As proxies for biological age assessment, we agreed to use telomerase activation, which is the restoration of telomeres, and DNA methylation modification, which is epigenetic modification to confirm biological age reversal. I have been the administrator of these two longevity studies for the past eight years, and today it is my pleasure to share with you our study results. Our belief that peptides could reverse biological age was based on Professor Kavinson's decades of published studies, including this 2003 publication. This multi-year study with 266 participants proved peptides could regenerate organs and systems, resulting in significantly decreased mortality. The following summary graphics show the results of those studies. This slide summarizes the mortality reduction over various time frames in people in two different age groups, age 60 to 74 and separately 75 to 89. The control group is the non-peptide group in the yellow highlighted section of the elderly group 60 to 74 over the course of 12 years. The mortality rate for the non-peptide group was 44%. When one peptide, the pineal gland peptide, was added, the mortality rate decreased to 22% or half as much as the control group. Of interest in this study, the peptides were only used for the first three years. This slide presents the study results for the older group of people, 75 to 89. The control group over six years had a mortality rate of 82%. The group using only the pineal gland peptide had a mortality rate of 46%. When a second peptide was added, that was the thymus, the mortality rate dropped to 33%. This is an extraordinary mortality reduction. So if only two peptides could produce this extraordinary result, what would be the result of using 21 of the peptides? Of interest in both of these age groups, the peptides were only used for the first three years with, report, with results reported some years later. In our Russian-American study, there were 124 study participants, mostly physicians, and the results were based on three years of participation. We used all 21 of the Cytomax peptides multiple times during each year. For each participant, we created a 12-month peptide bioregulator protocol using the 21 oral peptides, and each participant used four to five different peptides each month. Of interest, the dosage protocol was typically two capsules of each peptide for only 10 days of each month. That We didn't change any other lifestyle or interventions. We were purely looking at what the peptide bioregulators could do. The question, could the peptide bioregulators regenerate enough organs and systems to reverse biological age? We're going to start here with telomere study results. Telomeres are protective caps at the ends of our chromosomes, and I'm sure all of you are familiar with this. As we age, telomeres naturally shorten with each cell division. And shortened telomeres are associated with accelerated aging and increased mortality. Short telomere length is also linked to the development of chronic diseases such as cancer and heart disease. Dr. William Andrews, an American scientist, points out 
that every time our cells divide, our telomeres get a little shorter, and every time they shorten, our cells age. Elizabeth Blackburn, pictured here, and two other American scientists received the Nobel Prize in 2009 for their discovery of the telomerase enzyme. Decades earlier, Professor Cavinson actually discovered the telomerase enzyme and, more importantly, how to activate it, resulting in the restoration of telomeres. Though nominated for the Nobel Prize, his discovery and use of peptide bioregulators to lengthen telomeres was totally ignored. To this day, American scientists cannot slow telomere loss or lengthen telomere. In 2003, Cavinson published clinical studies proving that peptide bioregulators lengthen telomeres, resulting in increased cell replication and reduced mortality. My assignment was to confirm in America Professor Cavinson's studies using peptide bioregulators to activate the telomerase enzyme, lengthening telomeres and increasing cell replication. The result would be extended lifespan and enhanced health span. These are my telomere results from 2014 to 2019. Uh, there were no peptides used in 2014 because I didn't, I wasn't aware of them at that point. I had not met Professor Cavinson. Um, and so I had what we call accelerated telomere aging. So for instance, in 2014, with my chronological age of 68, my telomere age was 75. In other words, my telomeres were basically accelerated loss at that point. In 2016, I retested, but at this point, a year earlier, I had met Professor Cavinson, had been on the peptides myself, I was 70 years of age, and my telomere testing reflected that I was now 68 telomere-wise. In other words, I had decreased my telomere age in a relatively short period of time. I continued testing in 2018 at 72. My telomeres were equivalent to a 44-year-old. 2019 at 73, my telomeres were equivalent to a 35-year-old. And then finally, in 2023 at the age of 76, my telomere age was 23. And when we talk about telomere age, what we're saying is in a measurement of telomeres, that that is the equivalency. So my telomeres were equivalent to a person 23 years of age. And as noted, as humans age, their telomeres shorten with every cellular replication. In contrast, the study participants, even though in the three years of the study, the uh, Study participants using the peptide bioregulators experience telomere lengthening. The bar graph is a sample of the results of the first 20 uh, study participants. And you'll note the range of results. Some participants experience significant results and others less. We know from many, many studies that the difference is explained by stress. A good example of how stress shortens telomeres and peptides restore telomeres is Tora Bright. Tora Bright was a three-time Olympic participant in skiing, and when she was 32 years of age, uh, her Olympic doctor did a telomere test, which surprised me, but they do exhaustive testing on these athletes, obviously. Her baseline telomere test showed at age 32, she had the telomeres equivalent to a 56-year-old. And again, it's the stress that drives accelerated telomere loss. So we put her on a program, and about 18 months or so later, with her telomere uh, testing, she her telomeres were equivalent to a 31-year-old. So these are the results of the telomerase activation study. For the 124 telomere study participants, the average decrease in cellular or biological age was 21.62 years over the three-year period. So for every 12 months on the peptide program, the participants reduced their telomere age by seven years. In 2020, commercial epigenetic testing became available here in the US, and at that point, we added the epigenetic methylation study. 
Epigenetic age along with telomere age are two of the most significant components of biological age. Epigenetics can change gene expression based on life factors, such as if you look at this slide, um, what we're talking about in terms of epigenetics, genes cannot be changed, and genes are like a computer hard drive. Epigenetics is the software, you might say, that can make modifications to which genes are turned on and genes that are turned off. We know that lifestyle and environment influence gene expression, things like diet, stress, exercise, sleep, the climate, nutraceuticals, exercise, et cetera, et cetera, will all impact and can turn long longevity related genes on and off. Epigenetic age is measured by analyzing DNA methylation patterns, which are chemical modifications to DNA that regulate gene expression. Basically, we can make an assessment of epigenetic age based on these chemical modifications. What we know is that, and these drafts, uh, graphs explain that the relationship between epigenetic age and increased or decreased mortality risk. If your epigenetic age is older, that's the red graph, than your calendar age, you have an increased mortality risk compared to your peers. If your epigenetic age is less, that's the green graph, the graph then your calendar age, you have a decreased mortality risk. For example, on the chart, if you're seven years older than your chronological age, that equals an 80% increase in mortality risk compared to your peers. By contrast, on the green graph, if you are seven years less than your calendar age, you have a 50% decrease mortality risk. The goal with the clinical studies is to get the people out of the red graph and into the green graph. And by the way, these graphs depict it as a linear, and it's, it is not as such. As an example, here are my results. Uh, my epigenetic age compared to my calendar age. Now remember, I had been using the peptide bioregulators for five years before this testing became available. So my baseline test at age 73, after being on the peptides for four or five years, my epigenetic age was 69, or four years less than my calendar age. That represents a 28% decrease mortality risk. Two years later, continuing with the peptide protocol, with a calendar age of 75, my epigenetic, or in this lab called a true age, was 65. In other words, 10 years less, which represents a 70% decrease mortality risk. Another example for one of the participants uh, who tested prior to going on to the program, uh, Mark, as we called him, his baseline uh, calendar age was 63, but nearly 70 epigenetically, seven years older, which is represents an 82% increase mortality risk. Two years later, after being on the peptide program at 64, his age, but his epigenetic age was 48, or 16 years less than his calendar age, which represents a 114% decrease risk for mortality. In addition to an epigenetic age, we now have the technology to determine an individual's biological pace or rate of aging, as we call it, compared to their calendar aging. The issue is, are you aging faster or slower biologically than your, alan, than your annual calendar aging? My pace of aging over four years on the peptide bioregulator program each year was slowing down my rate of biological aging. So in 2020, my biological rate of aging was uh, 92 or 0 0.92, which is 8% slower than my calendar aging. Then in 2021, it slowed down further. In 2022, it slowed down to 0 0.89 or 11% slower. And in 2024, it slowed down to 0 0.79 or 21% slower than my calendar aging. This is a comparison before and after for one of the people in the clinical study. On the left here, pace of aging before, 
he was aging 12% faster than his calendar aging. On the right, after being in the peptide program, we were able to slow that down to 10% slower, a dramatic difference. Most recently, in partnership with Yale University, we've been able to break down the epigenetic assessments to where we can look at the biological age or epigenetic age of 11 organs and systems. And so if we look at the results over here, all of the uh, circles, the kind of red circles on the right, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them, represent accelerated aging. So we're able to determine which organs are actually a, a, have accelerated aging. And when I build a protocol for them, then I put in additional peptides that will address the organs that have accelerated aging. So the epigenetic study results were an average decrease in epigenetic age of nearly five years, resulting in a mortality risk decrease of 56%. Now, compared to telomere aging of 22 years, this may not seem as significant, but it's a totally different biometric. Telomere length, increased cell replication, primarily results in enhanced cellular functionality and ultimately longevity. Epigenetic age decrease is primarily mortality risk reduction. Other than Professor Cavinson's peptide bioregulators, I'm not aware of any other evidence-based intervention that can safely reduce mortality risk by 56% in two years. So summary of the studies. <laughs> Our two studies show the telomeres activation and DNA methylation results show a 21.62 year age reduction in cellular telomere length. For epigenetics, nearly a five year reduction in epigenetic age resulting in a 56% risk in all cause mortality. The combination of these two represents a significant reduction in overall biological age. At the moment, these, this is generally the, the current aging expectation that everybody has. We're young, we're middle-aged, then we become older and we have frailty problems. We're much more vulnerable to old age diseases and so forth. Professor Cabinson and I have a very different aging expectation. With the peptide bioregulator protocol, we have proven that peptide bioregulators regenerate organs and systems, slow and reverse human biological aging, reduce mortality. If any of you are aware of another longevity intervention that accomplishes this, please let me know so I can use it myself. But remember, as an attorney and a scientist, bring me the evidence and the data. I personally owe an enormous debt of gratitude to Professor Cavinson. He was my friend, my mentor, and one of the great scientists of all time. He is missed. Thank you very much.